right, let's uh, get this show on the road. Hello, everyone. Hope you're well. Um, so just wrapped up with a quiz. Um, hopefully you like that format better than the last time. My other class liked this format better. but uh, So you didn't have to really type anything. So as long as you could figure it out on paper, you know what to choose. And hopefully that went OK. Also note that the bonus points count for extra. So I believe there were th three or four. I forgot. I wrote it a couple of days ago. There were three or four uh, bonus points, but those don't count out of the total. So the total points for your quiz, it's out of 12. And so if you, so while Gradescope will say everything was out of 16 or, or maybe even 15, uh, it's really out of 12. So once I copy that over to Jupyter Grades, it's going to be out of 12. The bonus is extra. They were optional. Um, so there is that. Um, let's actually jump into it. Um, because we only have a little bit of time left in today's class. So let's not waste any more time. Let's actually stop the video and start the lesson. So last time, I left you guys with some examples to do. These three over here, try these for next time. And we are going to do those as well. So um, just, to, just to recap, blah, 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 blah. so last time, We looked at something called an exact differential equation. So these were guys that had the form, um, some function of X and Y where the X is the independent variable and the Y is the dependent variable times DX plus some other function of X and Y uh, times DY equals zero. Now, there is something called an exact differential form that gives rise to an equation like this. Um, in fact, it's that same guy from the chain rule, one of those things, you know, kind of like a Laplacian. But um, it gives rise when you set the uh, differential that would have been over here, you set it equal to zero, uh, you get what's called an exact differential equation. The idea is there is some function, um, f, some scalar function, such that if I were to take its partial with respect to x, I would get this. And if I take this partial with respect to y, I would get this. Uh, then this is called an exact differential equation. So this is the form where um, if I take the partial of m with respect to y, it's equal to the partial of n with respect to x. That will tell you that your fxy is equal to your fyx. Clairaut's theorem, as long as we have continuously differentiable, tells us that there's a single function that breeds both of these guys. And then by the chain rule, we know how to, how to actually find such a function. So the solution was um, looking like f of x comma y equals c. And that's how you write the solution, the general solution, where your f is going to be the integral of m with respect to x. And simultaneously, your f is going to be the integral of n with respect to y, where you just ignore all the guys that repeat themselves. So we looked at that last time. This is a very special type of differential equation. Shows up often enough, and we did some problems with those. We did a couple of examples. I then left you guys with some examples to do. So um, let's actually do that. So if I move this one down here. Okay, so that was a quick recap. It's a different kind of differential equation. We know the strategy for solving this. So maybe someone can tell me what did we do with this one here? Make that a little bigger. So what happened for this one? You would check that it's exact. How would you check? Right, my verse is next. What is the M? Okay. 
Okay, so um, I want you to notice that this guy here is your M and this guy here is your N. That's turned around. Notice that this guy's attached to the DY, that guy's attached to the VX. So you have to be very careful with that. Um, so you might have seen this, and if you just went in and thought that the first one was the M and the second one is the N, that's not how it goes. It's who is attached to who, right? Someone's going to be the partial with respect to X. That's who you consider the M to be. Someone's going to be the partial with respect to Y. That's who you consider the N to be. So those are going to be the guys. And now you would check. If I take the partial of that with respect to Y, the derivative of the derivative of this uh, with respect to y, the derivative of sine y is cosine y, so it's just e to the x cosine y. And if I take the partial of n with respect to x, then I'm just differentiating the e to the x, which is e to the x, the cosine y is as a constant, so it stays. So these guys are exact. So now you know it's exact. Then once you know it's exact, what do you do? Okay, so f is going to be the integral of m. So here, you know that your f, this uh, function that, that's somewhere out there that you're looking for is going to be the integral of m with respect to x. All right, so you're going to integrate e to the x sine y with respect to x. And of course, that's going to give e to the x sine y. Plus some constant, which is potentially a function of y and then your f is going to be the integral of n with respect to y. So that's going to be, oh, someone's coming in. e to the x cosine y. And the integral of cosine of y is positive sine of y. So you just get that plus some arbitrary constant, which is potentially a function of x. All you do now is you pick out the unique guys that show up. That guy showed up. This guy already showed up. And so now you just write down those guys in a list. So this is just e to the x sine of y equals c. That is going to be your general solution. All right? And again, you can always do a check in the reverse, right? So if you look at your f as the, the left side, then you would realize that if I take the partial with respect to x, I get e to the x sine y. And that's actually going to be the guy that was my m before, e to the x sine y. And if I take the partial with respect to y, I will get e to the x cosine y. And this is going to be my n from before. So the e to the x cosine y is right there. So those guys check out. And so you know that that's the answer once you, once you actually have it. You can always check in the reverse. You can check your integration with a derivative. And if you actually do the partials, that should actually get you back to the components of the original. So that's nice. That's, that, that's essentially it. That's essentially uh, how we uh, do these guys. So here's another one. Let's bring this guy down. Okay, so this one seems like a long one, seems crazy, um, but uh, the process is going to be similar. So remember, once you identify a differential equation of a certain form, I teach you a method that goes along with that form. So we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing. Of course, here, you should be able to identify this guy here as the M, because this here is a Y prime, which is a dy dx. So if you multiply both sides by dx, the dx will be attached to this guy, and the dy will be attached to that guy. So this here is the N. 
And so if you take partial with respect to y, go through here. So in the first term, notice that you'll need the uh, product rule here because you have two functions of y. You have y times e to the xy. So I'm going to differentiate the y, leave the e to the xy plus leave the y, differentiate the e to the xy, which is going to be xy e to the xy cosine 2x. Then you move over here to the second term. If you differentiate that with respect to y, this is going to be minus 2xy e That's going to be minus 2x e to the xy sine 2x. Differentiate the 2x with respect to y, and that's. Then if you do the partial of n with respect to x. So here now you have three functions of x. You have the x, you have the e to the xy, and you have the cosine. So we know how to do the triple product rule. So that's what we're going to do. So the generalized version of the product rule is that if you have a product of functions, you want to differentiate it. Uh, you differentiate each guy once, and then you sum up all these products. So uh, you differentiate the f, leave the g and the h. You leave the f, differentiate the g, leave the h, plus you leave the f and the g and differentiate the h. Each function gets to be the derivative once, and then you sum all these guys together. So we're just going to do that for this guy here. So I'm going to leave differentiate the x leave everybody else i'll get e to the x y cosine 2x plus leave the x differentiate everybody else differentiate the e to the x y and leave everybody else so i leave the x the derivative of e to the x y with respect to x is going to be y e to the x y and i leave the other function then i'm going to differentiate the cosine and leave the x and the e to the x, y. So the derivative of cosine is going to be minus 2 times the sine of 2x. Then I'm going to be able to leave the x, e to the x, y. And you're going to notice that these guys are the same. So we're exact. So the check actually works out. And, and we're done. So here, now we have to actually do the, um, the actual solution here. So we're going to have to know how to integrate this with respect to x and integrate this with respect to y. Now, let's actually do the integral with respect to y first because it's just easier to get out of the way. So this is n dy. This is going to be the integral of what is our n here, x e to the x y. Cosine 2x minus 3. So integrate this with respect to y. So that's just going to be e to the x, y cosine 2x minus 3y plus some constant that's potentially a function of x. So that's our guy. Now, when you look at f is also going to be the integral of m with respect to x. This one is a little bit longer. This one is y e to the x, y. cosine 2x minus 2 e to the xy sine 2x plus 2x. Dx. Okay. Now, one thing is here, there are a couple ways you could do this. One, because you, you can see that this, uh, because of this guy here that was in the other one, when you're looking at this, you're kind of looking at it 
it from a product's perspective. So you, you may notice this comes from using the product rule. or finding uh, the partial with respect to x of e to the xy cosine 2x. So that's something you might notice. If I differentiate the exponential with respect to x, I get y e to the xy and I leave the cosine. And then if I leave the xy and differentiate, so this would be uh, y e to the xy, cosine two x plus now you leave the e to the x y and then you find the derivative of the cosine which is minus two sine two x and so because of you actually did this check with the product rule and you can see how the product rules separate something into something that looks like that or you just notice that hey this guy kind of looks like over there with the trig function times the exponential um, it gets it gets to look like that. So you can actually take a notice from the product rule. Um, another thing you can notice, however, is you can actually start to do something like integration by parts. Um, otherwise, if you don't notice that, which hopefully you do, and this, this isn't even just a, a problem that I, I did to be mean. I've actually seen a problem very similar to this one show up on a final exam. It's, it's why I chose this to be an example in class because I saw something like this on a final. So this is something that, something like this large, they would expect you to be able to deal with. Um, now, I think they would expect you to notice this, but at the same time, for the student who did not notice this, um, you should actually be able to actually do the integration it takes you back to integration by parts. Uh, int by parts is what you'd try. So I asked you guys to look over your integration techniques. So I am assuming that you did this at some point, And so I'm not really going to have to explain this too much. But let's start by integrating this guy. Um, so if you want to integrate y e to the x, y cosine 2x with respect to x, okay. So you remember there's something called liate, which tells you how to choose the u. Here we have an exponential, which is an e. Here we have a trig function, which is a t. So I'm going to say u equals the cosine and the dv equals the e to the xy. So your du is going to be minus 2 sine 2x. Two your v is going to be the integral of this with respect to x. So that's going to be 1 over y e to the xy. And then you're going to plug that in. And so you know that the integral of u d, I'm actually reviewing for you guys, but whatever, is equal to u minus v times the integral of v du. And so you're just actually going to plug these guys into that side. So you take the u times the v, uh, u is this, I think v needs to be the whole other guy, sorry. Uh, miss someone here. Y, which means that this is gone. Okay, so now you take the U times the V. So you get E to the XY cosine two X minus the integral of the V times the DU. So this is two times E to the XY sine two X. And this would now become a plus. But now what you notice is that this integral here is going to cancel uh, that integral there.
right? Because this guy is another guy that you're integrating. So here you have the integral of minus two e to the x y sine two x, and here you have plus two the integral of that that. So that guy cancels that guy out, and so the integral part of that is just when once you plug that in, you'll just get the integral of this. So this means the integral of m dx is going to be e to the x y sine two x cosine two x. And this integral part is going to kill that integral part. And then I'm just left over with the two x to integrate, which is just uh, x squared. Plus some other constant of integration that is potentially a function of y. And now you pick the unique functions that show up. Uh, pick unique functions that show up. And you sum them together. So circle those guys in blue. So I have this guy. I have an x squared. If I look above from the n line, I have that same guy. So I'm not going to count that twice. And I have the minus 3y. So I'm going to come back here and write that down. So this means I have e to the xy cosine 2x plus x squared minus 3y equals a constant. And that is our solution here. So that one's a little long, but that I've actually seen something like that. Very similar, if not this exact problem on an old final exam. Um, so that's how you would actually get through that one. Okay, so now the last example that we were to finish with last time, hopefully you tried this. What's this one? Okay, uh, so what did we do with this one? Want to check that it's exact? So this guy here is your M. This guy here is your N. N zero, what is that? So if you take M with respect to Y, you get one. And if you take N with respect to X, you get two. Interesting. Those aren't the same. So it turns out this is not exact. Now, I don't know, did I make a mistake? Did I copy the problem down wrong? Did Javon make a typo? I don't know, did, did you guys actually try doing this by doing the integrals and, and just... So, so that's the first thing I want to know. How many people saw this and realized, hey, something's off? Maybe Jovan copied the problem down wrong or something. Like they, they knew to, you knew to stop here and figure out that, yeah, it's not gonna, or, or how many of you just went through and just integrated everything anyway? Like that's, that's, that's what I'd like to know. I don't know. Okay, good. So yeah, it, th there seems to be an issue with this one. Um, And did anyone know what to do? Then I tried to solve by the mu method. Okay, so now this question here, this exact differential equation, you might have noticed that he looks very familiar. And I'm not just talking about he was on, on, on in the class last week and I asked you to work on it, but this exact problem was actually on the quiz as a bonus. Um, it turns out that this one isn't as straightforward and this was, kind of a segue into this was kind of a segue into the next thing I wanted to discuss. So it turns out 
that we can actually treat this guy as an exact equation. However, we are going to have to tweak things a little bit. Um, so we are going to cover another topic. The, the last thing I want to do in this section is covering exact differential equations with integrating factors. So it turns out that sometimes an OD is not exact, but you can actually make it into an exact differential equation by multiplying through by an integrating factor. So remember, an integrating factor, this is just a function that when you multiply an ODE by it, it makes it convenient to integrate in some way. So when we saw this for linear first order differential equations, multiplying through by an integrating factor actually changed the left side into the product rule so we could integrate easily. So it's called an integrating factor. It turns out we want something, it turns out that for some problems, even though they, do, they are not exact in the first place, you can transform them into an exact equation by multiplying through by a function such that the integration in the exact equations method will actually work out. You can actually multiply it through by something that will make the equation exact. So here we just saw that it is not exact because your my and next are not the same. But here's something we can do. Take mu equals y, right? So that's the mu method. Mu equals y. If I multiply this guy by y, I will get that guy. You're going to notice that. So if I take this, multiply by y, I will get this. And now, observe. If I take my... I would get, well, 2y. And if I take next, I will get 2y. Oh, look at that. That was from, okay. I had, I had a, a picture saved for this moment. <laughs> I guess I should I should be doing something better with my time. <laughs> okay, I'm having too much fun. All right. So now it's exact. So now notice what you can do. We can go through and we can actually find uh, the function. If I look at the integral of the m with respect to x, this is going to look like the integral of y squared dx. This is going to look like xy squared uh, plus some constant that is potentially a function of y. Um, but again, we're not going to really care about that. Also, if I look at the f as the integral of n with respect to y, this is going to look like 2xy minus y squared e to the y dy. So this is going to be, of course, you integrate that with respect to y, you're going to get xy squared minus the integral of y squared e to the y dy. This second integral you would do with um, with integration by parts, but because it's repeated, you can do the tabular method. So you'd set up the table and you can differentiate the y's because that's going to be the u. You can integrate the e to the y. And then you're going to multiply across here and You're going to alternate signs. So you multiply, apply a positive sign, multiply, apply a negative sign, multiply, apply a positive sign, multiply, apply a negative sign. And so that's actually going to be your integral. So this is going to be xy squared minus y squared times e to the y with a positive sign. minus 2y e to the y with a negative sign, and then plus 2e to the y. And of course, this here is going to be minus the integral of 0. So that's going to be just your, plus, your constant. So this is xy squared 
minus y squared e to the y plus 2y e to the y minus 2 e to the y uh, plus some constant that is potentially a function of x. So we can do that with the tabular method. Notice that the x e to the y, the x y squared, this guy is already accounted for in the other one. So your solution is just um, all of these. Just take all of these. And that is your general solution. Okay. So you can actually solve this one as an exact equation. You just have to tweak it a little first, right? Multiplying through by y gets me to a situation where it is now exact. And now I can just do the exact equations method. So any questions on this one, on this process? So this was one of the bonus on the, on the quiz. So any questions on this before we move on? So that was that one. So sometimes you're in a situation where the equation as written is not exact. Um, and oftentimes you're going to notice, here's the, 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 the thing that makes this one particularly challenging because it's not exact as written, but you'll also notice it's not linear. You're also going to notice it's not separable. You're also going to notice that it's not homogeneous. You don't, you, like none of the things that I told you before, separable, linear, homogeneous, exact, it's none of these things. How are we supposed to solve it, right? So it turns out here, multiplying through by y uh, actually transforms it into an exact, which um, leads to the obvious question, which Ophir just asked, how did you find that mu? Where did that guy come from? How did you pull that out of a hat? Well, I didn't exactly pull this out of a hat. This is actually something that you can solve for. Um, and I just solved for it ahead of time and I knew that was gonna be the answer. So I just, I, I multiplied through. How would you actually figure that out though? Um, so yeah, this is just some statements that I made before. Sometimes we have an equation that's not exact how we can multiply it through. Now in general, the integrating factor is difficult to find in general. So there isn't really a, a, a nice answer to that question, but I'm going to tell you about some situations in which we can find it. So, right, so that's the thing. This guy didn't fall into any category that we've seen thus far. However, multiplying through by this guy, put it in the category of exact equations. In general, it's going to be difficult to figure out that function. What is the function I have to multiply by to turn an equation that's not exact into an exact equation? Well, here's, here's why it's difficult, right? So notice, uh, suppose, and this is just a recopying of that sentence as well. Suppose I have m dx plus n dy equals zero uh, is not exact. Um, we'd like to find a mu so that if I multiply through mu times m dx plus mu times n dy equals zero is exact. Now you'd have to realize what does that mean for this to be exact? Well, this is now the coefficient of dx, and that is the coefficient of dy. So notice that this would mean that we would need that if I took the partial of this with respect to y, I should get the partial of this with respect to x. 
And so pretty much finding a function that satisfies that equation is how you're going to find the mu. However, now once you actually start to delve into what it would mean to find such a function, you're going to realize that something uh, interesting starts to happen, right? This means, if I just use like the product rule, so mu is just some function, right? So I use the product rule on the left. So I take the partial of mu with respect to y and I leave the m plus I leave the mu and take the partial derivative of the m with respect to y. That must be equal to, I do the product rule on this side, partial of mu with respect to x. I have the n plus leave the mu and differentiate the n with respect to x. So I have that. Now I'm going to just group these guys just because uh, let's say here I have mu sub y m minus mu sub x n plus mu m sub y minus mu n sub x equals zero. So at least of this equation. Now, So he's been paying attention. What kind of equation is that? If you were to, to give it a name, right, or, or a name or a category or something like that, what kind of equation is that? Notice I have some equations. There's a function that I want to solve for in that equation, and which is mu in this case. However, the equation involves mu, as well as it involves the partial derivative of mu with respect to y, and the equation involves the partial derivative of mu with respect to x. What kind of an equation is that? Any guesses? It's one of those things that's right under your nose. I know, I know it sounds like a trick question, but it's not, it's not a trick question. <laughs> okay, maybe I, let me phrase it this way. Suppose I have an equation that involves y and its derivative. What would you call that equation? Right. I don't tell you anything about the equation other than that. Oh, I have an equation. It involves some function y and its derivative. What do I call that kind of equation? Well, the name of that equation, such an equation, is literally the name of this class. It's called a differential equation, right? It's called a differential equation. Now, if, it, if it's just a single variable function and it just has regular derivatives, like a, I know there's a y of x and I'm looking at y prime, I call that an ordinary differential equation. Here, I have partial derivatives. Therefore, this is called a partial differential equation. Now, remember, I, our focus isn't going to be on partial differential equations, but it's just interesting that they show up here. It turns out that this kind of interplay happens all the time in real life, where you, you might be in a situation where you're really focused on solving an ordinary differential equation, but it turns out that a partial differential equation comes up and its solution is going to be important to the solution of the ordinary differential equation. Oftentimes it happens vice versa. You're working on some partial differential equation that you want to solve, but then somehow an ordinary differential equation becomes important to solving that. So there are a lot of situations in which, yeah, especially for engineers, ordinary differential equations are very applicable, very important. A lot of applications that require partial differential equations. And so much so that 
it might seem like the partial differential equation is so much more important than an ordinary differential equation. But it turns out that you kind of need them both at the same time. You can't really have one without the other. There are times when you're studying ODEs and PDEs pop up. There are times when you're studying PDEs and ODEs pop up. And you're not really going to know how to solve a PDE without understanding how to solve an ODE. That's like someone knowing how to do partial derivatives before they know what a derivative is. It doesn't make any sense. So in this situation, by following what I, by setting up what I want to happen, it turns out to get that thing to happen means I need to be able to solve a PDE. Now, here's the thing about PDEs. That's, that's even more, just as true, if not more than with ODEs. These are hard to solve in general. Um, so what we're going to do and what is often done is, so we'll restrict our function since we don't require it to be unique. Right now, when when you want to be able to solve this equation, you just want something that when you multiply it through, it's going to make it exact. You don't care what it looks like or how it behaves necessarily, other than when I use it, it's going to make this thing exact. So what that gives you now is the power to actually choose. You can choose. Oh, let's pretend that it's this kind of function. Can that work out? And if it doesn't work out, then you can say, oh, let's pretend that maybe there's another kind of function. So you're pretty much going to pick and choose the kind of function that you want to be able to, to solve this PDE. This is one of the, the main techniques. So here, suppose we assume mu is a function of y only, meaning there are no, there are no x's in it. Okay, so let's say we make this assumption and it's fine. If I can find a function of y only that does this, I don't care as long as it's exact, I'm fine with it, right? Now, what does that lead you to? Well, this means that when you see mu of x is going to be zero. So our PDE will simplify. So I have this PDE up here. It's actually very hard to solve in general because I mean, come on, it's a PDE and we're, I'm just a lowly ODE student, right? So this guy's hard to solve in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to force it to behave more like an ODE. Pretend that this, this function, which in general can be a function of two variables, pretend it's only a function of one variable. For argument's sake, let's say it's a function of Y only. So it means that this guy is going to, it's, it's going to be zero. And so now I'm going to try to solve for that guy. So notice here, I have mu y m plus m y minus n x times mu equals zero. Okay, so now let's go back. Let's see who's paying attention. All right, so I'm looking at this. It's almost like a single variable equation, right? What kind of equation is this? How would I be able to solve for the mu? The mu is the, the, the point here. That's what I really care about. The big M, the M sub Y, the N sub X, these are just functions as far as I'm concerned. Um, just generic functions. This guy is the important guy, the mu. Now, if I know that that's the important guy, how can I get around solving this equation? What kind of equation is this, would you say? This I actually, I actually wrote this down by hand, so you can ignore that. Okay, you're looking at this. 
Any ideas as to what kind of function that is? What kind of equation is that? I mean, there were problems on the quiz today that simply ask you to identify them. No, I mean, get specific. What kind of ODE? We covered a bunch of them. If you want to look at it like an ODE, what kind would it be? So you think it's separable? How would you separate the variables here? Well, I noticed that here's a derivative of a function, here's a function. This is just something else, right? So it almost looks like I have some P of T times Y prime plus some G of T times Y equals zero, right? It reminds me of something like that. Yeah, it's, this is like, yeah, this is separable. So by making this assumption on my mu, I get a separable, uh, essentially something that behaves like an ODE. I can move this to the other side. So this will become NX minus MY times mu. I can divide by M and divide by mu. So this is mu sub Y over mu equals nx minus my over m. And so now I can just integrate both sides. Notice I would integrate with respect to y because I'm thinking of this as a function of y only. So that's, I'm going to undo the derivative with respect to y. Remember mu is mu of y by assumption. So this now leads me to a situation where I, I have ln of the mu. This is going to give me the integral of whatever this thing is. And so my mu is going to be e to the integral of nx minus my over m dy. And it turns out that that is going to give me an integrating factor. Assuming that my mu is a function of y only, I can use this to find an integrating factor. Now, similarly, if my mu was a function of x only, I could have done the same thing. What would have happened is uh, this part would go to zero and I would just solve for the other, solve for mu from the other guys and integrate with respect to x on both sides. So essentially I would end up with this, as the mu. Okay, so that is how we can solve for it. And this is just, as you can see, it's one specific situation. It's one specific situation. Let's hope everything cut. Right? So I simply made the assumption, pretend my mu is a function of y only, and I get this guy is the integrating factor. If I pretend that my mu is a function of x only, I would get this guy as the integrating factor. And it turns out that you can choose various situations, and your textbook, I believe, talk about one other situation. Oh, pretend mu is a function of x times y only, meaning you can isolate all the variables to look like the form x times y. Or you might have another situation where they said, oh, pretend y over x is, is how the function has to look. Pretend mu is a function of y over x, or pretend mu is a function of this, right? So in, in, when you're in some situation um, that you just want any function, you want any integrating factor, you can just kind of restrict how, how, uh, how chaotic your integrating factor is, and then kind of work out what the solution would have to be like. So a lot of times when it comes to PDEs and even ODEs, you're going to find that what we're going to do is we're going to make certain guesses and we're going to launch prayers and we're going to be like, okay, pretend the solution looks like this. Does that, can we get something to work out in this case? Uh, what if we pretend the solution behaves like this? Can we get it to work out in that case, right? And you'll find that there are times when we can actually restrict the situation 
and ultimately be able to develop a solution that way, right? So that leads us to this little table here, which talks about exact equations for integrating factors. Now there are in theory an infinite number of ways for this to go down. I want you to appreciate that. But for this class, I only expect you to be able to find two of them. I expect you to be able to find uh, when the integrating factor is a function of X only and when the integrating factor is a function of Y only. Now, when it comes to that, you don't have to go from scratch and solve this PDE. All you need to do is just find this function. So notice here in this situation, we had the n, n sub x minus m sub y over m. So in this situation, I call that r. So as long as you can check that this is a function of y only, it's r sub y, then your mu is going to be the integral, e to the integral of that guy. And conversely, if you write down m sub y minus n sub x divided by n, and that is a function of q only, that is a function of x only, then your mu is going to be the integral of e to the integral of that function. So let's actually show how it would work out here. So let's go back to this one and we're going to do it from scratch. And then I will show, I will have us do some other examples. Okay. So here's a differential equation, okay? So um, in practice, in class, a function mu of y will make this exact or something like that, right? So it would be, so you'll get a question and you'll realize, hey, this doesn't look like anything that we did in class. And then I'd be like, hint, a function mu of y, so that's me telling you that the function, it's a function of y only, a function mu of y will make this exact, right? So here's a differential equation, a function mu of y is going to make this exact. So what are you going to do? So since mu of y will make it exact, how do you find the mu? Um, well, you would check the, uh, the guy that we have up here that we solve for. The n sub x minus m sub y over m. Now, if you plug that in for the function that you see here, if I take the partial of n with respect to x, I would get 2, minus the partial of m with respect to y, I would get 1, divided by m itself is just y. So this is 1 over y. So this is a function of y only. And what that means is that e to the integral of 1 over y dy is an integrating factor. So I did this and I checked. If I do this, can I get a function of y only? I did it and I realized, yeah, therefore, this guy is going to be an integrating factor which means my mu is going to be e to the ln of y, which is just y. And of course, it's the absolute value of y, but I, again, you don't have to be super unique here. Um, technically, it's a constant times absolute value of y. So I, I just picked y, and that's how we knew what to multiply by. Now, in general, um, You would have to do this check on your own. However, in class, I'm usually going to tell you, okay, look out for this. This might, this might help you out. I'll actually give you a hint to, so you know what to look for. But when, I, when, you saw, when you see this in absence of everything else, this might be something that you check. Look at this expression. Is it a function of y only? If yes, that's an integrating factor. If no, what you can do is look at this other expression. 
m sub y minus n sub x over n. Is that a function of x only? And if yes, then e to the integral of that is going to be an, a, a, an integrating factor that will make it exact. So here, and the rest is history. We actually did this above. So let's actually do an, an example here. So first we're going to do one where, boom, let's move this one out the way, boom. Okay, so examples. The following ODEs are not exact. However, make them exact and solve them. The type of integrating factor is indicated. So here, this is a differential equation. You can check that it is not exact. If you do the check, if you take my, so here is your M, there's your N, my, you would get one, Take next, you would get uh, 2xy minus 1. So not exact. Here, though, I told you, hey, mu, there's a function of x that is going to make it exact. So how would you find that function? Set q of x equals to this guy, this guy that you have in this table here, which eventually you're going to have memorized or maybe have on a formula sheet or something. Uh, so my minus next over n, right? So actually going to do that, my minus next over n. My is one minus next, which is two x y minus one, all over n, which is x squared y minus x. That's what this is going to be. Um, the ones are going to cancel. Or no, it's not going to cancel. So this is going to be minus a minus one is going to be a plus one. So you, this is going to come out and become two. So it's two minus two x y over x squared y minus x. And what we can do here is in the top, we can factor out a two. In the denominator, we can factor out an x. In fact, we can factor out a minus x. And this would be one minus x, y. So this actually cancels. And you would get equals minus two over x. That is your q. And this is a function of x only. This means our integrating factor is going to be e to the integral of minus two over x dx. This is going to be e to minus 2 ln of x, of course, plus c, but you don't really care. Um, and so this is going to be x to the minus 2. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to multiply through by x to the minus 2. So you, you have this equation. And you're simply going to multiply through by x to the minus 2. What's going to happen is that the first part is going to be 2 plus x to the minus 2y dx plus y minus x to the minus 1 dy equals 0. And notice what's going to happen here. Now, if I take my, I would get x to the minus 2. If I take next, I would get x to the minus 2 exact. So I just went from a situation where it was not exact to a situation where it's exact by computing this function. Now, of course, in general, you're not going to know that this is going to work ahead of time. But in class, like in a class like this, I'll tell you ahead of time, oh, by the way, a function like this might make it exact. So that's a thing for you to try. You're, you're going to try it you're going to realize it's going to be, be exact. And then you continue with your merry way on the new integral. 
So you're going to have your f is the integral of the m with respect to x. Where is the m? This is the m. 2 plus x to the minus 2 y. Two x minus x to the minus one uh, y plus some constant that's potentially a function of y. Also, your f is going to be equal to the integral of n with respect to y. So your n is this y minus x to the minus one. So this is going to be. y squared over two minus x to the minus one y plus some constant that is potentially a function of x. Uh, the unique guys that appear are this, this, that's a repeat, this. So you put those three together, set it equal to a constant, that's your solution. Two x minus x to the minus one y plus y squared over two equals a constant is your general solution. Do this one. And then after this, what you can do is you can go back over the quiz, look at the bonus problems, and see if you could get to the answers now if you if you didn't know what to do before. So take a screenshot of that. I'll scroll back up to the table for you to take a screenshot of that. And then uh, you guys tell me how to solve this, and then we'll get out of here. So that's your function. OK. Take a screenshot of this. Uh, Take a screenshot of this table right here. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, you actually only need case two here because I already told you it's a function of y. Okay, so make sure you got that. All right, by the way, here we, we can do the check. My is going to be zero. Next is going to be one over Y. So not exact. All right, tell me what function is going to make it exact. What do we look for? What equation do we check? Right, and what is that? How do you get that? Um, I believe it's the other way around, no? Isn't it nx minus my? It's nx minus my. Right? So here, what would that look like? Well, nx, we just found that that's one over y minus my, we just found that is that over m, which is this. So this is just one over y here. And so this means that your mu is going to be e to the integral of one over y. 
this is going to be e to the ln of y, which is just y. So your mu is again y. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through by y. This means I, the first term is going to be y plus the second term is going to be x minus y sine y equals zero. And so now when you check, my you get one, you check next, you also get one, so it's now exact. This means we're going to integrate our f is going to be the integral of m with respect to x. This is the integral of y dx. This is just xy plus a constant that is potentially a function of y. And if we look at our f, the integral of n dy, this is going to be the integral of x minus y sine y dy. Um, so this is going to be x times y minus the integral of y sine y dy. And again, you can uh, derive that as one, derive that as zero. Integral of sine is minus cosine. Uh, integral of minus cosine is minus sine. So, so this times this times a plus sign. So it's minus, uh, minus y cosine y. This times this times a minus sign plus sine of y. And then this times that is zero. So that's just going to be plus the, plus the constant. I use D usually, some potential function of X. So this is going to be X, Y plus Y cosine Y minus sine Y plus some function that's potentially a function of X. And we pick out the unique functions that appear. Uh, the X, Y actually repeated itself down here. So that, that, and that are my unique functions. And so x, y plus y cosine y minus sine y equals a constant is going to be our derivative, our solution. Now, hopefully that was clear. That's all I have for you guys today. And that ends exact equations with integrating factor. So um, I don't know if by the next class I'll get into this, but if not, probably the next class I'll get into this. So what I'd like you guys to do, there's nothing really to do now. Uh, I'm going to cover some miscellaneous equations from section 2.9. But then I'm going to want to start to look, uh, some linear algebra concepts. For next class. Cause I'm going to be explaining some things. And if you, if you're, you're really rusty on your linear algebra, a lot of it is just going to be kind of going over your head. So, or the next. So things like solving systems of equations with matrices. Um, you should look in uh, Kramer's rule. And I think somewhat optional. Uh, solving systems of ODEs with eigenvalues. 
and eigenvectors. Now, for those of you who have taken 392, you would have covered all this already. Um, but for the rest of you, this might be something that you'd want to look into. Um, for those of you who have taken 392, you're going to see a lot of parallels, and it's going to actually be kind of cool. There are a lot of things in 392 that they just told you, oh, you just do this. Uh, we're actually going to explore why those things actually worked out the way they did. And we're actually going to use these to actually derive some other important things that we're going to um, use in chapter two. There are going to be some assumptions and some theorems that we're going to want to, to, to apply. And it turns out that the reason why they kind of work out, the, the, one of the nicest ways to actually see why they work out is to go through the approach of linear algebra. It makes it a lot more straightforward because linear algebra is already going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So I'll be explaining some things using linear algebra. So it will be very good if you actually look this up. Um, there are going to be cases where you're going to actually need something like Kramer's rule specifically in this class. Uh, so it's, it's worth your time to look these guys up. So practice more in exact equations, practice more in find, solving exact equations with integrating factors. You can go over the quiz, those problems for the quiz um, and see if you can actually get them right this time. If you didn't get them right before, I will post the video here with the notes uh, so you know where to find them. And that's going to happen at some point tonight, I assume. Um, so that being said, let's stop there. That's, uh, that's today's class. Hopefully that was uh, somewhat clear. And uh, we're just going to get out of here now. So enjoy the rest of your day. It's actually a great day out. So maybe if you can go out, get some sun. Um, I wish I could, but I have another class after this. So I'll see you guys in the next one, hopefully. Any questions before we sign off or are we good? Are we okay? Okay, you too. Stay safe. Have a good afternoon and I will uh, see you guys in the next one.